currency bot currently reports back a balance for both what the user has in their purse and their bank. But that's it. Let's put a bit more fun into this by adding the ability to deposit money, withdraw money from the bank, and then use it to buy items. So the first thing I'm going to do is add that new command in, and that command is going to be bank. Now all this is going to do is take the money that's in the user's purse and put it in the bank. So it should be reasonably straightforward. Now what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to be a bit lazy because I'm going to be using the user ID loads and I don't want to have to turn it into a string each time. So I'm just going to do that up front. I'm going to make a variable called user ID and make it the string version of ctx.author.id. I'm also going to need to keep checking to make sure that user actually exists in the database and that's a bit of a faff. So what I'm actually going to do is write a subroutine for that. Check user ID is going to check that that key exists in the database and return true if it does and return false if it doesn't. That means that that massive if statement and faffing about from before to a simple if statement that says if check user user ID. Now that means if the user ID has passed the check. So what am I going to do? If the user ID exists, I'm going to say that the database value for my current user and their bank is going to have the value of their purse added to it. I'm using plus equals for that to make that simpler. I'm then going to reset the value of their purse to zero. And I'm going to use my balance function to show the user their balance. So I can do that with a weight balance brackets CTX. And all that's doing is it's passing on the message to the next function and doing it asynchronously. So we'll go do that and we'll get on with the rest of the code. So let's see that work. Well, great, I've moved the money from my purse to my bank account, but how do I get it back out? Well, let's write a withdraw function. I'm going to add a new command for withdraw, and I'm going to add to it a second argument, which is amount. Now, I'm going to set it as a float, which means it can be a decimal number. That'll also accept integers or whole numbers, by the way. And I'm going to set the default for zero, because if a user asks to withdraw money and doesn't tell us how much, well, I'll just withdraw nothing and, and it'll be in the same place. Now I'm going to copy and paste the code from my bank code because it's going to be very, very similar. But what it's going to do instead is we're going to first of all check that the user has enough money in their bank to withdraw it. If they don't, I'll say they don't and I'll return nothing to stop the code. But if they do, I'm going to make sure that their bank is reduced by the amount I'm transferring and their purse is increased by the amount they're transferring. Let's try that out. So banking allows me to move money from my purse to my bank and withdraw allows me to pull that money back. So it'll stop me withdrawing ridiculous sums, but will it work with a negative number? Well, it will. And that's a bit strange, isn't it? Because I've withdrawn now minus 50, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, let's add another statement to check that the amount is greater than zero to do something different if the amount is less than zero. We'll tell them they can't withdraw negative money and return it. And that seems to fix that problem. And there we go. We've got a simple way of banking and withdrawing money from our accounts. Take some time to go and build that yourself and make sure you can't get away with any shenanigans from the withdrawal option. Next up, let's buy some items. So interestingly, the first thing we have to do is actually make a list of items. I'm going to put that in the database because what would be really nice is if we could track names of items, the amount that they cost to buy, the quantity that we've got left, and maybe even store an icon in case we want to use that later on. I'm going to make a subroutine called instantiate items. This is going to be quite long. And I'm going to run it once and then remove it from my code, simply because if I want to set the database back up from scratch again, I've got code to do it now. So I'm going to store all this in my database under a key called items. So in my instantiation code, I'm going to see if there's anything there. And if there is, I'm going to delete it. After that, I'm going to set up the database. I'm going to make the key of each row, the name of the item, and then make a dictionary within that that stores the cost, the icon, and the quantity. I'm going to use Ghostwriter Chat just to give me a bunch of code to set up a bunch of items very quickly. Cool. And I'm going to add that to my on ready code as a subroutine. And I'm going to run it. You'll see that the keys have increased to two, which means that all that's set up. I'm going to comment out that line inside my on ready function because I don't want it to reset the database every single time I start. I might reset it later on before we go live with the bot, but for now, I'm just setting it up blank. 
With the database set up with some items to buy, let's build the command to buy those items. So I'm going to set it up with the name buy, and I'm going to have one option, which is the name of the item. It's going to be a string, and I'm going to set it up as a default of none, which means that if the item is none, what I'm going to do is just print out the list of things that the user can buy. Now that's reasonably straightforward. I'm going to use a loop to go through the items and print them out. Now, there's a problem here because if I do it in the naive way, and that means that I use a loop and I use await ctx.send, I'm going to get a little problem here. Let's build it that way anyway so you can see what's going on. I'm going to use a for loop to go through my database and extract all the items. My for loop is going to contain for name and item in db items dot items. Now the dot items bit is actually going to extract the key and the values for that key from the database as we go. So I can see both the key name and the dictionary of what's in there. I'm only going to show them items where the stock is greater than zero. In other words, things they are actually allowed to buy. And I'm going to send it to them one item at a time. I'm going to add some code around that to put it all within a single box. And the way I do that is by putting three back ticks before and three back ticks afterwards. So you see the way it outputs here is a bit weird. It's taking a while. It's pausing. And the reason for that is simple rate limiting. The Discord server is thinking you're spamming it. So it's giving a little bit of a pause before it sends through the rest of your messages. And that's not a good experience. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to create a string that has everything in it and then send that. And as you can see, that works a lot nicer. OK, stop here and go build that. Set up your database, instantiate it, and then set up a system that very quickly shows you what the items are if you don't put any items in the command. OK, what happens if we do put an item in the command then? Well, the first thing is we need to check if that item is in the database. Otherwise, we're going to crash it if we attempt to access it. We're just going to tell the user it's not available and return it. Now, at this point, we do need to make that item into the same case as our dictionary. Now, our database dictionary, we've used capital letters to start of all the items. So we're going to need to make item equal to item.title brackets brackets to make it title case. In other words, the first letter to be a capital letter. And this is so we can find it within the dictionary. We're then going to check the user does have an account with us again, just using the same code as before. Because remember, this is a separate function. Then we're going to access the item details. And the first thing we're going to do is check they've got enough money. Make sure that what's in their purse is not less than the amount of money that it's going to cost. If it is, we're going to warn them and return to stop the processing. Otherwise, we're going to take away from the purse the value of the item, reduce the stock of the item by one, and then tell the user they've bought it, which works fine. But we haven't actually yet bought the item. We haven't moved it into the user's list of items. Now, the reason for that is that's a little bit fiddly because when we set it up, we set the item list to none. So we do need to deal with that. Now, what I'm going to do before I do anything else is I'm going to check to make sure that they've actually got a list as their items because by default, it's not set up as one. So I'm using this command. I'm saying if the items list in the user is none, then I'm going to replace it with a blank dictionary. That means my next job can be much easier because all I need to do then is append the item, including the name and the cost, to my user's items list and then tell them they bought it. Now, we do need to check if they've already got that item already because we want to increment that value if they do. Otherwise, we'll just set it to one. So we'll look for that with an if statement and have an else that sets it to one if they haven't got that already. Now, with that working, all we're going to do is go into balance and add a little bit of code in to show the items. That's going to need to change a little bit. But it's broadly the same as what we've already done, pulling out the list of the items that the user actually has and putting the quantity in there. So as you can see there, now we've got the balance of the money and the items they've got stored. Well, that's pretty cool. Why don't you go and build the system that allows you to buy items and extend your balance command to include the ability to show items. With that done, here's your challenge. Let's extend that again with a special third argument that is the quantity. So I can buy three hats if I want to. If I don't have that third argument in there, if I don't put a number in, Let's assume they're just buying one, but otherwise, let's buy a multiple of that item and show it up in the user's balance command. When you're done, share it with us by publishing the community and post it online with the hashtag Replit Discord Bots so we can all take a good gander at your code. Okay, so you can use your hard earned money to buy items, but how do we make money to buy them in the first place? Well, in the next lesson, we're going to look at building a work command 
which uses general knowledge questions to allow people to work and earn money, as well as a rob command that allows stealing of money from people's purses. This is where the currency bot gets interesting. See you in the next lesson.